Hello everyone, uh, I am Anshika, your teaching assistant for the functional genomics course and uh, today I will be taking a tutorial lecture in which I will be telling you about some of the interesting tools that we use to study genomics. I will start with this slide in which um, I am showing you schematic of a transcription uh, cassette. So, we all know that RNA polymerases bind to the promoter region and transcribe genes and uh, and to bind to the promoter they scan through the, they look for the consensus regions which are present upstream of the promoter so as to locate the promoter. We have been reading all these facts in our textbooks, but ever wondered how these uh, consensus regions were identified in the first place. So, uh, it was uh, with experimental techniques and mutation studies that these consensus regions were identified. But, uh, are these, why are they called consensus? Because consensus means uh, these regions should be conserved throughout species. And how was that done? How was, how are these consensus regions mapped across the species, to, uh, whether they are conserved or not? That was done through DNA sequences or protein sequences were compared, massively compared across the, across different species. Here I am showing an example of uh, uh, prokaryotic uh, operons such as the tryptophan operon or the lactose operon or the uh, lambda, the bacteriophage, uh, some of the bacteriophage genes which are involved in those uh, operon systems. Uh, so, comparing uh, the DNA sequences uh, upstream of the transcription start site revealed that there were several conserved regions in that uh, region of the gene and uh, these were it was then believed that these regions which are conserved are indeed the consensus regions which helps the, uh, the polymerase to locate the promoter. So, these uh, conserved regions could also be called as motifs which are uh, which form the characteristics of the protein family and uh, I would call them these are called as regulatory motifs or uh, in the DNA sequence or protein motifs which even form the active sites where for docking of ligands. How are these uh, conserved sequences across the species mapped? Like what was done after it was located that there is some conservation indeed present? The, in case uh, of DNA sequences, the letters of the nucleotides ATGC were counted across the sequence and the one which is present as maximum was thought to be the most important residue at that region and was thought to be conserved throughout evolution. And hence matrices were built by scoring by these scoring and these kind of concepts algorithms were built further to develop tools uh, which could be used for massively for comparing uh, thousands and thousands of sequences across different species. This is a, an example a diagram which I am showing you which shows uh, uh, different uh, DNA sequences which are uh, matched and the yellow color here shows you uh, the conserved regions. Uh, across these different sequences. So, like I told you regulatory motifs uh, or these conserved sequences they provide important starting points. These were discovered by aligning the upstream regions of related genes the, before the transcription start site and hence uh, this is how the conserved regions were identified. Tools such as multiple sequence alignment were thus developed on these lines to find such conserved regions. So, multiple sequence alignment is uh, generally aligned, this is the classical definition as stated by the European uh, Bioinformatics Institute EBI, you can go to this website and learn more about MSA. So, it is generally the alignment of three or more biological sequences, protein or nucleic acid DNA or RNA of ideally the same length and from the output the homology can be inferred and thus the evolutionary relationships between the sequences can be studied such as building of a phylogenetic tree which I will tell you later in my talk. Multiple sequence apart from phylogeny multiple sequence alignment has various applications. Phylogenetic analysis can be done for discovering evolutionary related relatedness that which species are evolutionary more closer than uh, discovering uh, motifs in DNA and proteins that which could be the motifs and proteins which could be the docking site for ligands. 
predicting a secondary structure of protein through homology modeling which could help again help in uh, recognition of different sites which could be very important for that protein for the function of that protein. Designing uh, oligonucleotide probes for microarrays. Now, this is important because uh, microarrays uh, they can be used uh, across different species which are closer to each other. So, designing such chips which has a region which has a probe which can bind to more than one species is of important. Also for uh, gene cloning finding out uh, restriction enzymes, restriction sites which are conserved across species is can be of importance. Uh, let me tell you like how to do a multiple sequence alignment. So, we are all familiar with this website uh, ncbi.nlm.nih.gov. It is it has a database of uh, all the sequences the DNA RNA protein sequences available and uh, I am going to look for the evolutionary uh, relationship or conserved regions uh, across a gene which I have been working on in it is called the heat shock protein and uh, it is uh, uh, expressed uh, it is uh, elevated in the cells in case of a stress condition such as a bacterial or viral infection to help the cell combat that condition. So, heat shock proteins are known for now they are known to be highly conserved throughout different species and this is one of the reasons I took it in my study over here. So, uh, HSP A4 is the heat shock protein that uh, we will be aligning. So, across different species. So, uh, to start with you can type the name of your gene whichever gene you are interested in aligning uh, in this column and then uh, from the drop, drop down you can select uh, protein and click on search. So, it will give you different uh, uh, HSPs that are across uh, different uh, species. So, I for this analysis I uh, am starting with the homo sapien HSP 70 A4 gene. So, you just click on HSP 70 homo sapien A4, uh, it will give you all the details of uh, HSP A4 and as you browse down it will tell you more about the protein, the what kind of protein it is and what kind of domains it has, NCBI will tell you all about it, you could browse down and read about it. And uh, here on the right side you see this option as run blast, now our first aim is to retrieve the sequences of HSP A4 from different species and then only we can subject it to a tool which can look for conservation across those species. So, when we click when we do a blast then it will retrieve the HSP 70 sequences across different gene, uh, different species. Click on run blast and uh, what happens is that uh, there is a this NCBI tool called blast which you will read in uh, another lecture taking by Anupma. In uh, so, a blast it will you just the accession number of the protein will automatically appear over here and then you can simply go down and without changing any options just click the blast button and this window shows you a blast running. So, th this is the output of the blast the for HSP A4 gene. So, uh, to, to go directly to the different uh, organism uh, sequences of this HSP, we click on taxonomy reports and uh, here below the organism report uh, window uh, option, we, we get this window which shows uh, as you browse down you will see that this is for homo sapiens and uh, then this is for gorilla. So, as you browse down you will see the HSP uh, protein sequences listed for different organisms. So, as we browse down we can see that uh, the HSP sequences for different sequence uh, for different uh, organisms like gorilla and uh, chimpanzee orangutan. So, you can simply select the organisms for which uh, you can uh, you want to do an homology search and you can simply select those uh, organisms how uh, it is it will it is a good idea to uh, copy the accession numbers of those protein sequences from here. So, like you see in the previous slide there are below homo sapiens there are a lot of hits. Generally the first hit is the one which with maximum similarity. So, in case you are interested in an organism we go for the first hit and copy the accession number. So, likewise for all the organisms we are interested in we copy the accession numbers and paste it on a word file just like I did it over here. We copy the accession numbers and then 
copy back the accession numbers from here and put it on the home page of the first page that I showed you of NCBI website and from the drop down again we select protein again search. Now, what this will do? It will give you the sequences of just those proteins which you selected no other uh, organism. Now, uh, what we want is we want the protein sequence of these organisms which we have sorted out in a FASTA format. So, for that we click on summary and you see this window pops up uh, where there are two options FASTA and FASTA text. So, FASTA text gives you specifically the sequence of the protein with no other information which is it will be easier for you to copy paste and uh, retrieve the sequence. So, we do that we click on uh, FASTA text and this is the kind of window that appears. Uh, you see there are protein sequences in the order mentioned in the for the different organism the protein sequences appear in the same uh, order. Now, we can do a little modulation here is that uh, once we feed this these sequences to a alignment tool uh, multiple sequence alignment tool it will take the first uh, letter that comes uh, that appears after the arrow and uh, that will denote the sequence. So, we just uh, modify this uh, a bit and uh, manually add the name of the organism in the common name of the organism. So, that we can uh, for the ease of understanding. So, that is what we do and I have copied this this uh, I first copied this entire thing to a notepad any text editor you can use and you see before the accession number I have added the common name of the organism for the ease of my understanding like for human for homo sapiens chimpanzee for pan paniscus and monkey for macaca milata and so on. Copy this information again and now we go to one of the uh, multiple sequence alignment tools on the EBI website the European Bioinformatic Institute and uh, here like I showed the definition of MSA to begin with they have defined MSA and there are various tools for doing uh, multiple sequence alignment. Uh, mentioned uh, uh, at this website. All these tools employ uh, use different algorithms have been built to have been used to build these uh, softwares and you can explore uh, each, uh, each one of them individually and learn about their pros and cons. Uh, here I will use the most updated uh, the recent ones which is called Clustal Omega and you just click on um, launch Clustal Omega here and you get this window where you can paste all the sequences which you want to align. And uh, if you want to do a protein alignment like I told you DNA or RNA can also be aligned by using these tools. So, you select protein from the drop down menu and simply paste your sequence from the notepad over in this window. We do not want to make any major alterations in the options let them be the default options you can always explore the other options available and click on submit the kind of window you get when the job is running please be patient. This is the output that we get in case of cluster omega like you saw I changed the names of the organism to their common names and now it is very easy to uh, compare the different species. You see those sequences are aligned to each other and below the last sequence there are certain mark these uh, symbols signify a star or an asterisk what you call signifies a complete match as you can see for yourself wherever this HSP gene like I told you is very is a highly conserved protein known and you can see almost all uh, below every nucleotide column you will see a star which means it is it is highly conserved and protein is conserved throughout. So, uh, an asterisk like I told you it means a uh, complete it means identical amino acids. In case of a single dot that you see here there is change of one single amino acid which means all others a single dot means there is just one amino acid different and all others are the same whereas, two dots as you see here means there is more than one variation which is not evident in this over here, but you can explore more and find out that is how the case is two dots means more than one variation. So, this is the kind of uh, uh, output that we get uh, upon doing a multiple sequence alignment and this can be used for various purposes which I have uh, already talked about in the beginning. Uh, here you see the options on the top the favorite uh, application of uh, 
multiple sequence alignment is a building a phylogenetic tree that tells you relatedness of the species and you can draw it for yourself simply click on uh, multiple sequence alignment. This is you can browse below and see the output that you have got. So, you can see for the HSP uh, there is a very high degree of conservation and uh, the asterisks uh, are present all over the sequence. Like you see here two dots. So, these two dots uh, signify more than uh, one amino acid is uh, different whereas, a single dot defines uh, uh, they are just one variation in one of the sequences, all others are the same. So, like I told you, just click on the phylogenetic tree and here is the phylogenetic tree available for the different organisms of your uh, protein that you are analyzing. And here we can see that uh, the distances, the genetic distances calculated for each of the organisms that will help us tell about the relatedness or the farness across the species like monkey, human and chimpanzee seems to be close as evident from the genetic distance calculated here. Let me tell you some interesting, we have learned so far that what multiple sequence alignment is and how to do a multiple sequence alignment, but uh, let me tell you about some, some interesting cases where people have used multiple sequence alignment and uh, in clinical studies or uh, to solve real life problems. One of this is an attempt to build a vaccine against the Zika virus. Now, we have all heard about the deadly Zika virus. Uh, it uh, originated from, it was identified in uh, uh, South African countries, I think Uganda and uh, later it spread to several different countries. So, Zika virus like uh, it is commonly known now is infected, uh, uh, is transmitted by the bite of infected Aedes species of uh, mosquito and uh, it is uh, passed through uh, from a pregnant woman to it to her fetus and can cause birth defects. So, like I told you there is no vaccine for medicine, vaccine or medicine for Zika and uh, so this interesting study that I am going to show you here, it uh, uh, resorted to other viruses which uh, other mus uh, viruses which are similar to Zika virus uh, such as the dengue virus and this is like a common approach for building vaccines. So, what people do is that they look for viruses which are common to the one which is the target and look for conserved domains. So generally uh, vaccines against viruses are built looking for epitopes which are perturbed when the virus fuses with the host. And those epitopes are considered as the favorite epitopes for building a vaccine. It was this study what it tried what the authors tried to do was look for epitopes such epitopes which for which the vaccines had already been this uh, been made for the dengue virus and if those epitopes are conserved in the Zika virus that and then if hence if, if that is the case then it will be uh, a beginning to build vaccines against those epitopes. That is what they did and this is a, um, a multiple sequence alignment output that I am showing from their study. The first uh, for your ease I will uh, call out the uh, naming uh, listed over here. Uh, the first uh, sequence is of the Zika virus and all others below it are from the uh, different strains of dengue virus. So, here you can see the color pattern denotes the different degree of conservation. The red color shows a high degree of or almost complete conservation. And in this study they interestingly found that uh, this, this the fusion loop which is which I just told you is important for finding the epitopes uh, for, pre uh, for preparing vaccines was found to be highly conserved between Zika virus and other strains of dengue which was good for their study. Such many more such studies uh, were done to in an attempt to do the same. Also, uh, we have heard about, uh, you must have heard about the uh, SRY gene or the sex determining region Y, which is responsible for male determining the um, sex of the fetus uh, to maleness. So, what this study did was that they wanted to check across uh, several species uh, the homology of this SR, uh, the conserved pattern of this SRY gene if any. 
So, since this is such an important gene, it determines the sex of the fetus, the authors try to compare it across different species such as human, chimpanzee, dog, pig, rat, cattle, buffalo, goat, sheep and so on, many more different species. And this is the output from the study that I am showing you. The uh, one on the top shows a multiple sequence alignment uh, of the uh, at the nucleotide level and the one below shows multiple sequence alignment at the protein level. And the different colors here show different uh, degrees of conservation and at the bottom you can see the sequence logo. So, the height denotes the degree of conservation, more the length of the nucleotide, more it is conserved at that particular position. And that is how consensus regions or conserved regions were figured out across the different species. This is a very interesting uh, exercise to do, you can always go back to this research paper and do it for yourself. You can retrieve the sequences of uh, all these species for the SRY gene and see if you get a similar output or not. This is about uh, aligning the sequences, again you can uh, build a phylogenetic tree using the same tool which I uh, told you. In, the, in this paper they the same, they built a phylogenetic tree from their output. From this tree they inferred lot of interesting facts that uh, the SRY protein sequences from the killer whale Orsinus orca which we see here and uh, the dolphin has the least genetic distance of 0 0.33 and are 99.67 percent identical at the amino acid level. Also, like we all know that homo sapiens and chimpanzee are very close, uh, are known to be very close, is evi also evident from this study that they have the next closest genetic distance of 1.35 and are 98.65 percent identical at the amino acid level. So, it is it indeed an in interesting thing to study and you can always explore more uh, from what I have told you in this uh, talk. So, another important uh, tool that we use in studies, functional genomic studies is to run a PCR which you have, which Dr. Ganesh has taught you in one of the lectures. But uh, to do a PCR we need a primer. So, how do we design a primer? So, let me tell you primers can be designed for DNA or the RNA which is coded from the DNA from, from the at the genomic level or at the transcript level. So, today I will tell you how to design a primer to amplify a transcript present in the cell. So, here you see a PCR gel, this is a normal PCR gel where uh, we have uh, DNA bands evident over here which are stained by ethidium bromide stain which is illuminated in the UV light and uh, on the sides you see the ladder to know the size of the DNA band. So, uh, this is a simple polymerase chain reaction which is done using primers and the DNA and then loaded on the gel to show you the product of the PCR. Uh, so, uh, to design the primer for uh, quantifying or identifying uh, the presence of a transcript in the cell, we, we need to design a primer for that and uh, I will show you here I will show you about designing a primer for a gene called uh, GAPDH which is uh, considered to be a uh, constitutive gene uh, expressing under all conditions and uh, it, its level is not does not uh, generally change across different conditions in the cell. So, I will simply type GAPDH, this is the symbol for the protein uh, GAPDH, it is one of the enzymes in the glycolysis cycles we select gene over here. So, these are the different gap DH across different species that they are listed over here and for whichever organism you want to uh, design a primer you can select that uh, organism. I will select uh, human over here. So, you see the all the information about this gene is listed over here, the complete name glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase and uh, you see a little summary over here which tells you about the function of this gene, the known function of the gene. Uh, you can browse down and explore more about the gene, but here we want to design the primer. So, first we want to retrieve the sequence, the transcript sequence of this, the RNA sequence of this gene. So, we go down here, uh, you see the genomic sequence, the RNA sequence, the 
protein sequences all are listed for this gene. The NM, NM represents the uh, transcript sequence, click on that. So, this is all about the mRNA of this uh, gene, uh, it is a 1455 base pair long mRNA and all about it is listed below, you can go through it to learn more features about it. And we are interested in retrieving the FASTA sequence of this uh, mRNA, so just click on FASTA. So, this is the sequence, the mRNA sequence that we have obtained here. Copy this sequence from here and open a word file, paste a sequence over here. Now, an important thing to uh, keep in mind while des uh, designing primers for detecting mRNA uh, levels in the cell is that uh, we do not want any non-specific uh, uh, bands present in the amplified in the PCR with the, dif the, with the primers that we design. So, it is important to keep in mind to design primers from different exons which bind to different exons spanning an intron in between. So, uh, that is important because uh, during the process of splicing, the intron is cleaved out and the exons are ligated together. So, in the mature mRNA, uh, only the exons are stitched together. So, uh, if we design primers from different exons, we will make sure that the final amplicon that we get on our PCR is indeed from the mRNA and not from a genomic sequence where the prim primer might have annealed. Since in the RNA samples, there could, there can be some contamination, some genomic DNA contamination. And if there is an intron present in bit between, then it will be a huge size and the primers will never be able to amplify that larger sequence. Uh, apart from this, another thing which is important is that uh, while we are for uh, designing a primer to uh, amplify an mRNA sequence, we uh, experimentally what we do is that we isolate RNA and then prepare cDNA. So, uh, and from that we you and that cDNA is what is the template for these primers. So, it is important that in the synthesis of cDNA uh, from the mRNA, uh, the polymerase might not have a very good fidelity all the time and complete the transcription and complete the synthesis of the cDNA to till the end of the mRNA transcript and it might just fall down. So, it is a, a, always a good idea to design the primers towards the end of the transcript since the end is where the 3 prime end since the reverse transcriptase starts synthesizing the uh, cDNA. So, we look for two exons which are the last uh, which are present towards the end of the transcript. So, we go back to the NCBI website where the information about the gene was given and here are the different exons that are uh, listed uh, here. So, uh, the first exon is present from uh, first base pair to 251st and so on. You can go down and look for the exons. The second one is from 352 to 458 and let us go towards the end. So, the last exon is from uh, 1161 to 1435. We copy this information to our word file. And the one just before this, the second last exon is from 748 to 11160. Just paste it before the last exon. We now have the positions of uh, the two uh, exons and we will try to design the primers, the forward from the last second exon and the reverse primer from the last exon. So, uh, word will help us do that and uh, we need to have an estimate of the number of nucleotides in, uh, in a row and we just uh, select that and this tells us there are around 70 nucleotides in the first row and we need to go until uh, 748. So, uh, we count uh, 10 rows uh, that will be 700 and in the 11th row will be containing the 748th nucleotide. So, this is hopefully the 11th uh, row and we give a space here just to confirm this this should make 700 and that is uh, that is what it is and now we need to go till 48. So, we will just randomly 
select some region and uh, this is 28 so we need to go further this is 39 give a space so this is 48 so in fact the space should be over here because 748 the exon starts with delineating the exon boundaries and uh, then this goes until uh, so th this is where the second last exon starts and So, this is the region we are interested in for designing the primers. So, for amplifying targets, you need to determine uh, what kind of product size that you want. So, it is always good uh, to uh, keep the product size low, so that uh, the conditions can be for the PCR can be set such that it the gene can be easily amplified. So, uh, we will select a region such that uh, we can get a 100 to 200 base pair amplicon and uh, I will select this region for designing the primer and now we go back to the NCBI blast tool, NCBI primer blast tool you can simply type uh, that on Google and you will get that tool. So, this tool will help you design primers with the template sequence that you have provided provided this is the template sequence. We can change the amplicon uh, size that we desire like I told you 100 to 200 base pair and uh, we can keep all other options the same and we can click on get primers. Primer blast tool is uh, designing primers for the sequence that we provided. So, we see here uh, the tool has given us the sequences uh, the different isoforms of gap dh that a primer uh, could be annealing to. So, we can either select one particular isoform that we uh, need to, we want the primers to uh, target or if we want to generally uh, tra target the gene uh, as a whole we can not uh, there is no need to select simply click on submit. So, the tool has uh, designed primers for us. Uh, uh, the different primer pairs that the tool has designed uh, and uh, our job is now to select a primer pair which is uh, uh, which satisfies the requirement of a good primer that is it should not bind non specifically to other sequences which uh, we can find out uh, from the results available here. Also it should not have uh, repetitions of nucleotide uh, repeats uh, which would uh, uh, result in uh, self annealing of the primer. and. Uh, there should be a, a, a uniform distribution of the nucleotides. Uh, if they are, uh, new, if the primers are GC rich, uh, then that would uh, pose uh, difficulty in uh, uh, their binding and uh, uh, denaturation uh, to the template. So these are the conditions, the things that we need to uh, keep in mind uh, uh, while preparing, uh, while picking up a primer set. So the first one is of 179 base pair. Apart from gap DH, it uh, also binds well to the uh, other transcript as well. Uh, the dots you see are the matches and uh, the nucleotides specified are the mismatches. So, we will not go for this primer pair. Uh, Let us look at the second one. It is a 104 nucleotide uh, primer pair and uh, it uh, matches as well with other transcripts. Primer pair 3 is 110 base pair and uh, it uh, gives, it does match with other transcript, but that is a very large uh, uh, amplicon of uh, 3 more than 3 kb, which is difficult to be amplified with the conditions which we will be setting for this primer, which will be like very stringent conditions. So, this is a good primer pair, uh, the primer pair 3. Again primer pair 4 is a good option. So, this is how you can always explore. So, the primer pair uh, uh, 6 
uh, does not seem to give us any uh, non specific matches. So, this seems to be a uh, good option and uh, all we now have to do is that uh, pick up these uh, uh, primer pairs from here and go back and match it to our sequence in the word file and make sure that these uh, primer pairs they anneal to the different exons that the, the forward anneals to the second last exon and the reverse anneals to the last exon. So, to do that we will we'll have to first uh, determine the boundaries of the uh, two exons. So, the sec first second last is until 1160 base pair. So, uh, so we can also color these exons so that we, there is no confusion. This is yellow and this is to a different color. And now we can see we can match the primer pairs. So, the forward primer pair let us fix that again. So, this is the primer pair and uh, the forward will match exactly to the sequence that is over here whereas, the reverse will the match the sequence in a reverse complementary manner. So, we can we can find the reverse complement uh, orientation of the reverse primer. We can copy it from here and then try to match it with the last exon. So, this is where it matches. So, we are successful in designing primers which bind to different exons and do not give non specific matches in the NCBI primer blast tool. So, this is how uh, we can design primers and uh, I hope you enjoyed learning uh, the these two functional genomics tools which in today's class and uh, do go and explore more such tools and if you have any queries you can write to us uh, at the course portal. Thank you.